Hello and welcome to another edition of Dungeons and Social Distancing with Nerdarchy. Today we'll be discussing Psionic Options Revisited for the Unearth Arcana. Welcome to Nerdarchy for Nerds by Nerds. I'm Nerdarchus Dave, and as usual, I'm hanging out with this nerd, Nerdarchus Ted. You won't need to be a psychic to find your next D&D video if you mind blast that subscribe button. Reach out with your mind and attune to that notification bell, and you'll never miss another Nerdarchy video. Welcome to another edition of our Dungeons and Social Distancing. You notice things are a little bit different. Me and Ted aren't in the same place as we normally are. As soon as we can, we'll be back to our normal, uh, normally scheduled videos and how we normally shoot things. Till then, we hope everyone will stay safe. We are going to jump into our regular content after we thank our sponsor for this video, D&D Beyond. Without D&D Beyond, things would be so much more difficult. They make developing characters, making adventures, and just finding rules for the game so much easier. You've got so much great things about D&D Beyond. You've got all the free articles. You've got the SRD. You've got the videos. And there's a library of homebrew material out there that you can explore and have fun with. I use D&D Beyond for every character that I make for all, all the different you know campaigns that I'm involved in. It's great for sharing for sharing resources. And as a, as a group, you could go in on you know one subscription and be able to share out a campaign. It's a fabulous resource. Highly recommend you check out D&D Beyond. There will be a link in the description. Okay, so we've got the new Unearth Arcana. It's made some changes to some things that you may have liked, maybe you didn't like, but apparently Psionics is moving forward and it is not to its final form yet, but I think we're getting closer. I really like what's presented here. Um, there's definitely some good and bad within within this. Bad at some of the insinuations that I'm that uh, that we're seeing, as well as you know some great with some of the uh, insinuations that are that are uh, layered in there. So there's definitely some surprises, uh, but it gets in and you get. Uh, the Psy Knight, the Soul Knife, the Psychic Soul, which was previously the Aberrant Mind for the Sorcerer. We get three new spells and five new feats that are, you know, based on psionic powers. So things are changing a bit. Uh, we also, there's some notes about this. We've abandoned the psionics, wizard, and following spells, ego whip, aid insinuation, mental barrier, psionic blast, psychic crush, and thought shield. Yet many of their effects can be found in the material in this document. Now, that saddens me a little bit because, uh, honestly... As an old school player, I'm more attached to the names than I am the abilities because, <laughs> you know, those are all things that actually came from the very earliest editions of D&D when, when Psionics was in the game and anybody could kind of have them. My first character in the uh, the campaign that, uh, you know, that you ran, which eventually became the Saturday Night Game and the uh, eventually, you know, the, the foundation of Nerdarchy was a psionicist in, in your game. Uh, that before you killed him with a, an acid arrow. But that's, you know, that's a story you guys have probably heard, you know, many times before. So, you know, in this document, we get, you know, what is psionic power, you know, psi in earlier editions. And what is Psy like in 5th edition? So what is Psionic Power? Basically, Psionic Power has been in 5e since they've launched it. You know, but it was on the monster side of things. And they kind of go into that and talk about how Psionic Power works and how it's kind of like an energy like magic, but not like magic in the game. So you guys can read all about that. It also has a nice little section, like Ted said, about Psy. In earlier editions of the game, talks about how it worked. And you can definitely see that as they're trying to figure out Psyonix and 5e, they keep looking at the previous editions, trying to figure out what worked and what didn't. It was all over the place. Psyonix could be very broken uh, or super complex in early editions. And they're trying to make it fit to the 5th edition model, which that brings us to you know Psy in 5th edition, um, specifically... We have this whole section about their first kind of like foray into psionics. You know, they, they talk about psionics in the current edition as early as 2014, with it being in the Monster's Manual, the Volo's Guide, Mordenkainen's, Out of the Abyss, Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica, Acquisitions Inc., and even, you know, in Eberron. Again, most of this is going to be in Monsters and NPCs. There are a handful of things that, you know, might wind up being listed as, you know, technically a psionic ability under certain, you know, racial type stuff. But for the most part, psionics as a class, you know, has really been experimented 
added since 2017 with uh, the UA for the Mystic. Uh, and in 2019 and 2020, they're ex still exploring those options to try and get it right. You know, everybody's going to enjoy what they put forward because as... 5th edition has evolved from all of the previous editions. The Psionics has to go along with that evolution. So, you know, my takeaway from this section is the Mystic is dead. Like, the last couple of UAs were starting to get me, make me feel that the Mystic is done as a character class, but this is even more so. And, you know, again, they cite some of those things we already mentioned. The fact that, you know, it stepped on the toes of other ca character classes. It was powerful. It was complex. So they're trying to figure out that right mix. We don't know if we'll get a psionic character class or not, or if it'll just be subclasses. That yet remains a mystery. Only Wizards of the Coast knows at this point. So I guess keep filling out their surveys and let them know how you feel. And that's the only way. With that, let's kind of like jump into, into um, the psionics from this UA. You know, it starts off with, is Psy a form of magic? And basically it says yes and no if you read through it. And, you know, they talk about it a little bit, which is cool. We're still getting those, si those sidebars. And then we have our first subclass, and which is for the fighter, and that is the Psy Knight. Awake to the psionic power within. A Psy Knight is a fighter who augments their physical might with Psy-infused weapon strikes, telekinetic lashes, and barriers of mental force. Many Gith Yankee train to become such knights as do some of the most disciplined High Elves. In the world of Athos, renowned gladiators in the arenas of the Sorcerer Kings are often Psy Knights, and in Eberron, the Psionic Kalistar view membership in this knighthood as a special honor. As a Psy Knight, you might have honed your Psionic abilities through solo discipline, unlocked it under the tutelage of a master, or refined it at an academy dedicated to wielding the mind's power as both weapon and shield. So at third level, you start getting your, your abilities, and the first thing you get is a Psionic talent, which is going to be kind of important going forward. You harbor a wellspring of psionic power within yourself, an energy that ebbs and flows as you channel in various ways. The power is represented by psionic talent die, the starting size of which is a d6. You're presented with, uh, every time you get this psionic talent die, you're presented with multiple abilities that you can use it for. And it's got a very interesting mechanic because it's got the ability to, to change size. And we'll get into that in just a moment. Uh, the first power is a protective field. When you or another creature you can see within 30 feet of you takes damage, you can use your reaction to roll your psionic talent die and reduce the damage taken by the number rolled plus your intelligence modifier, minimum of one, as you create a momentary shield of telekinetic force. It's a pretty sweet ability. I mean, reducing damage anytime using your, your reaction to yourself or to an ally, which, you know, it's going to scale, it's going to get better. And there's some other interesting things that we'll bring up shortly. Your side powered leap, when you make a high or long jump, you can roll your psionic talent die and extend the distance of the jump up to the number of feet equal to twice the number rolled, plus your intelligence modifier, minimum of an extra foot. This extra distance costs you only one foot of movement. That's a big deal because you're at you have the potential to add a lot of movement for the cost of one foot, especially considering you know uh, you know how how big a number you can absolutely roll. Telekinetic strike, you propel your attacks with telekinetic force. Once on each of your turns, immediately after you deal damage to a target within 30 feet of you with a weapon attack, you can roll your psionic talent die and, and also deal force damage to the target equal to the number rolled. So this is a lot of fun. You get to, one, add force damage to your attacks, but two, just add more damage. Yeah, and that is that is always great for, you know, martial type classes. Uh, so the changing of the die's size is an interesting thing, and it really took me uh, a couple of read-throughs to actually fully understand all of the nuance with it. So, as we stated, your talent die starts off as a d6. So whenever it tells you to roll a die, if you happen to roll the maximum number on that die, your die diminishes by a size. So for here, it would go from a d6 down to a d4. If you rolled it as a d4 and you rolled a 4, it goes away until you finish a long rest. If you happen to roll a one on your die, it goes up a size, capping out at what your starting size is. So for a low level psionic uh, or psionite, it would stop growing when you hit, hit a D6 and wouldn't go up again until you hit uh, a higher level. So it's a very interesting mechanic. Uh, it, you know, it says up to its starting size, which I missed 
you know, the first read through and it made me think like, oh man, what is the, what is the cap? Where, how, how high can it possibly grow to? Cause I'm like, man, you know, imagine if you're just rolling that ones, 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 and now you're sitting there rolling a D10 and a D12 where there's definitely much less chance of rolling and having it go down or go up a size. So you could stay at that, that D12 for a long time. But, you know, as I read through it, I'm like, oh, it caps out at what your, you know, max size is. So the term starting size, I think, let it be a misnomer for that particular uh, ability. I also did the same thing. And I was like, can you go from a D12 to a D20? This is kind of a big deal. But there's also another important caveat. Whenever you finish a long rest, your psionic talent die re when you reach certain levels in this class, the starting size of your psionic talent die increases. At 5th, it's a D8, 11th, D10, 17th, D12. So they do go up. The chances of it replenishing or diminishing go down, uh, you know, as you have the more powerful die. But you also get to have higher numbers. And, and you know, like it, when you're at that D12, you know, rolling an extra D12 of force damage or, oh, my God, I rolled a 10. I just jumped an extra 20 feet, you know, up or across. That's pretty awesome. Definitely gives you the feel of that, you know, you know, that, that Jedi? physical. Were you going to say Jedi? I was I, thinking I, Jedi. I was thinking Jedi, but I was like, you know, I'm going to go away from that. You know, just be like, you know, that that Supreme Martial uh, Warrior. But Jedi definitely works. Like, you know, I envision, you know, Obi-Wan Kenobi jumping up a platform from episode one. Uh, and that definitely fits, you know, what this would do. So a lot of, lot of fun things. And that is just what you get at third level as a side light. Well, so another important point... The important thing is cyber replenishment. As a bonus action, you can calm your mind for a moment and restore your sonic talent die to its starting size. You then can't use cyber replenishment again until you finish a long rest. So this means you're going to use that side die, even if you have terrible, terrible luck with dice. And I do four times, four times a day, four times a long rest. Essentially, you can do, use this die. But if you're super lucky and all you do is roll fives, you keep using it like you never have to replenish it. You keep going with it. You can use it every round in every combat in every situation as long as you don't roll that max number. Now, wi uh, Wizards has, uh, you know, a set logic pattern. Uh, now, the Psy Replenishment exists in multiple character classes as well as in, you know, uh, at least one feat later on in this document. So if you happen to gain this feature multiple times, it is not going to stack with itself because it is the same name. The specific wording of you then can't use Psy Replenishment again until you finish a long rest is, is you know, potentially going to come up if you happen to... Uh, you know, get it from multiple sources. So always keep that factor in mind. So we have uh, our seventh level ability is the next time we get something telekinetic adept psionic thrust. When you deal damage to a target with a telekinetic strike of your psionic talent, you can force that target to make a strength saving throw against a DC equal to eight plus your proficiency bonus plus your intelligence modifier. Unless the save succeeds, you can knock the target prone or move it up to 10 feet in any direction horizontally. So you get a little bit of control. So yeah, definitely a, a fun little ability. You've got choice to either, you know, pu push them to the side or to knock them prone. It's just an added benefit. You're already, you know, this is getting layered upon your telekinetic strike. So you're already doing extra damage at this point in time. You're now up to, you know, potentially a D8 of force damage unless your die is, you know, decreased in size through use. Super awesome ability of just stacking on things that you already get. Well, here's a really important part, to, part of that is prone or move up to 10 feet in any direction horizontally. That is side to side. That is back. That is you could pull them past you and throw them into the barbarian, you know, or, you know, where you're dwarven battle rager in his spiked armor. So it, it does give you a lot of a lot of options. I agree. So next up, we have telekinetic movement. If your sonic talent die is available, you can move an object or a creature with your mind. As an action, you could target one loose object that is large or smaller or one willing creature other than yourself. If you can see the target and it is within 30 feet of you, you can move it up to 30 feet to an unoccupied space you can see. Alternatively, if it is a tiny object, you can move it to or from your hand. Either way, you can move the target horizontally, vertically, or both. When you take this action, your psionic talent die decreases by one size. So this is really cool. 
in a couple ways. One, we're seeing a new mechanic where your die just automatically gets lowered because you use this ability. So you can, you're going to be limited on how often you can use it. But the other thing that is cool about this, this is a great thing for exploration. I can see players using it very creative in combat. So it gives a lot of utility to a fighter. But what, is, what you're not doing is you are not pulling an X-Wing fighter out of the swamp. No, def- no, unless it's, a, unless it's a rather small one. 10th level, you're going to get Psy Enhanced Metabolism. The psionic energy flowing through you has bolstered your mind and your body. You have resistance to poison and psychic damage, and you are immune to the poisoned condition. Which is a nice ability, you know. Uh, we get immunity to poison. The condition is awesome. And some resistances. Not going to cry about that at all. Now, as a fighter, getting to, uh, resistance to different types of damage is always a great thing. You know, you're you're always looking to, you know, how can I get more out of my hit points? Uh, so this is a happy thing. Po- poison is one of the most uh, prevalent damage type. And psychics, you know, usually when they get hit, you know, the psychic damage is hard. You know, it, it's a lot. So uh, getting resistance on that is pretty cool. Uh, 15th level, we get Bulwark of Force. You can shield yourself and others with telekinetic force as a bonus action. You can choose creatures, which can include you, that you can see within 30 feet of you, up to a number of creatures equal to your intelligence modifier, minimum of one creature. Each of the chosen creatures is protected by half cover for one minute or until you're incapacitated. Once you use this feature, you can't do so again until you finish a long rest, unless you decrease your psionic talent die by one die size to use this feature again. I love that they're pulling that die in of like, okay, you know, this is a, this is a great power. And you get to use it once, or you can choose to automatically reduce that die in size to be able to do it again, you know, coupled with, okay, well, I can use this a handful of times, use my Psy Replenishment, get it back. I mean, we're 15th level at this point in time, so our die is a D10. So, you know, D10, D8, D6, D4. All right, now I'll Psy Replenishment. All right, I've used this four times, and, you know, now I'm, you know, back to my starting die. Let's keep going. Yeah, it's definitely a great ability. It's uh, and it was also pulled over from the Psychic Warrior, I believe. Right. If not exactly, it was very similar. Yeah, sorry, that's th- three times because it would be a D tw- D ten, so it would go to a D eight, D sixty four. Uh, but I mean, once you get seventeenth level and it's that D twelve, then you'd be able to do it four times, replenish, and uh, and be back. So def- definitely, you know, there's definitely a lot of nuance to how this die, you know, the talent die is, is used if you're if you're playing your cards right. Now, 18th level, we get Telekinetic Master. Your ability to move creatures and objects with your mind is matched by few. If your Psychic Talent die is available, you can cast the Telekinesis spell requiring no components. Your spellcasting ability for this is Intelligence. When you cast the spell, your Psychic Psionic Talent die decreases by one die size. So, you know, here here you have, you know, the telekinesis. I don't happen to know how uh, how much you can move with that spell, but uh, maybe this is where we can move an X-Wing. And I think just... it's 500 pounds. All right, well, that's not quite enough to move uh, move an X-Wing. Uh, but, you know, it's still pretty still pretty cool ability. Uh, you know, it automatically reduces your, your die size. But, you know, you've got the ability to, okay, well, let me gamble and use it, use it for a handful of abilities. See if I can roll that one to get it back up a size and use it again. Like I said, there's a lot of nuance with this talent die. And I think it can be a lot of fun to figure out exactly how those talent dice are going to flow within games. I'm eager to play test that mechanic. I stand correct. It is a thousand pounds, but it's still not an X-Wing. All right, so moving on, at Rogue, we're going to get the Soul Knife. Most assassins strike with physical weapons, and many burglars and spies use thieves' tools to infiltrate secure locations, whereas a Soul Knife strikes and infiltrates with the mind, cutting through barriers both physical and psychic. These rogues discover psionic power within themselves and channel it to do their roguish work. They find easy employment as members of Thieves' Guild, though they often are mistrusted by rogues who are leery of anyone using these strange mind powers to conduct their business. And most governments would be happy to employ a soul knife as a spy. Amid the trees of the ancient forests of the Material Plain and in the Feywild, some wood elves walk the path of the Soul Knife, serving as silent, lethal guardians of their woods. In the endless war amongst the Gith, the Gith Sarai, encouraged to become Soul Knives, where stealth is required against the Gith Yankee foe. And in the world of Athos, a sorcerer king often turns to a Soul Knife to eliminate an enemy just as an insurgent soul knife seeks to undermine that sorcerer king's rule. As a soul knife, your psionic abilities might have you haunted 
since you were a child, only revealing their potential as you experience the stress of adventure. Or you might have sought out a reclusive order of psionic adepts and spent years learning how to manifest your power. Okay, so our first ability we're going to get a third level of psionic talent. It's exactly the same as the fighter, but here, here are the changes, and that's the things you can do with it. The psi bolstered knack, when your non-psionic training fails you, you can tap into your psionic power to help. If you fail an ability check using a skill or tool with which you have proficiency, you can roll your psionic talent die and add the number rolled to the check, potentially turning failure into success. Uh, which, you know, the cool thing about this is, you know, after you've made the check and have failed, you may get to roll this die. Where a lot of times it's like, before you know, but here, mm -hmm. like, the trigger is, you failed. Right. The, I mean, you you know when you look at the die, like, okay, what is it going to, what do I do? Uh, so you definitely, you know, can, can use this one for a lot of fun. The fact that it's coupled with the rogue, and it's something that rogues get expertise, you know, this is one more thing to really just be like, yeah, I'm a rogue, I'm a skill monkey, I'm good at what I do, and this just doubles down on that fact. I love it, you know, and... It's not a auto use, so it doesn't automatically decrease your your die. So like, oh, I rolled and get a bonus. If you didn't roll that that high number, it didn't cost you anything. If you roll a one, even even better. You know, you might not succeed, but you know what? You know, your die might might go back up if you've been using it. So I'm definitely definitely liking the knack so we also get psychic whispers you can use your psychic abilities to establish telepathic communication between yourself and others perfect for quiet infiltration as an action you give yourself and at least one other creature the ability to speak telepathically with each other when you do so roll your psionic talent die and choose a number of creatures you can see up to a number of creatures equal to the number rolled for one hour the chosen creatures can speak telepathically with you and you can speak telepathically with them to send or receive a message, no action required, you and the other creatures must be within one mile of each other. A creature can't use this as a telepathy if it can't speak any languages. And a creature can end the telepathic connection at any time, no action required. You and the creature don't need to speak a common language to understand each other. I would say, I, I've, there's one small thing I would change to this. What's that? I would make it language you they need to understand a language not that they need to speak a language this would m open it up and make it a little more interesting and if you wanted to have like a mute character you could telepathically talk to uh other people okay i i definitely uh you know see see that that caveat uh you know, ma making a change. I, I like this ability. I think it's very cool and, and useful in a lot of different scenarios. You can literally have that in-character argument that you know happens, uh, and it would all be in the, the character's minds as you're doing this stealth mission that you sometimes see on in movies and TV shows. Uh, definitely fun. I have to say that for the psionic talent for the, the soul knife, they only get two abilities where the cyanite got three. I, I don't know if, uh, you know, giving them the ability to do extra damage is necessary since they already have the sneak attack because they are a rogue. But, you know, maybe maybe something that would be a little bit, you know, cool. Maybe they could use their, their psionic talent die to basically gain a climb speed for a number of rounds equal to their uh, their sonic talent die. That could be kind of cool, and it would allow for infiltration and that kind of stuff, which is what the Soul Knife is designed to do. Rogues are tough because they're so good already, like adding more to them. I I'm, uh, I know. I just, you know, like, like I said, I just think that there should be one more thing. Oh, the other thing with the Psychic Whispers, not only do I think it'd be better to have it so that you can use it on creatures that understand a language the reason why that's also good not just the aspect of well maybe they're mute but the monster manual, manual actually has a bunch of monsters that are like that they don't speak but they, they do have an understood language it would increase the utility marginally on this but in a kind of like an interesting and very unique way i kind of uh, like i would agree uh there so, is the you know the the exact same wording for changing the die size and psi replenishment the die goes up at the exact same levels to the exact same amount, and psi, re psi replenishment works exactly the same. And as I stated earlier, because it is the exact same wording, it is the exact same ability, the, they do not stack. So if you were a Soul Knife Psychic Warrior, you would wind up uh, you know, losing out on that ability because you only get to use it once a day. So the Soul Knife does get another third level feature called Psychic Blades. You can manifest psionic power as a shimmering 
blades of psychic energy. When you are about to make a melee or ranged weapon and attack against a creature, you can manifest a psychic blade from your free hand and make the attack with a blade. The magic blade is a simple melee weapon with the finesse and throne properties. It has a normal range of 60 feet and no long range. And on a hit, it deals psychic damage equal to a die six plus the ability modifier you use for the attack roll. The blade vanishes immediately after it hits or misses its target and leaves no mark on its target if it deals damage. After you attack with the blade, you can make a melee or ranged weapon attack with a second psychic blade as a bonus action on the same turn, provided your other free hand is free to create it. The damage die for this bonus attack is die four instead of a die six. You know, technically, yes, this is a third ability, but you know, under Sonic Talent, they didn't have three. So it just, to me, it felt a little unbalanced. Psychic Blades are definitely the go-to for the Soul Knife. You're used to seeing that, you know, that shimmering blades of mental energy that, you know, manifests like, uh, you know, different superheroes or supervillains weapons uh, throughout Marvel and Mortal Kombat and what have you. Uh, so like, it's really cool. And the fact that, you know, they can throw them up to 60 feet is pretty awesome. No long range, so like they're not attacking with disadvantage with these things. Super awesome, super useful. One of the things to keep in mind too, that you're not locked into a dexterity build with this now because it has the finesse property, has the throne properties. So you can make ranged attacks with strength. You can make close attacks with strength, but it still meets the requirement for sneak attack. Yes, you're hundred percent correct. That's something that I had, uh, I had missed that little nuance, which to me, that's awesome. You know, you can make that half work soul knife and batter somebody to death with their uh, with these psychic blades that don't leave a mark of you know how the target was killed a psychic club sir psychic club <laughs> <laughs> soul, ninth level, they're going to get soul blades. Your psychic blades are now an expression of your psi suffused soul, giving you finer control over them in the following ways. You can make homing strikes. If you make an attack roll with your psychic blades and miss the target, you can roll your sonic talent die and add the number rolled to the attack roll. If this causes the attack to hit, your sonic talent die decreases by one size regardless of the number rolled. You also get psychic teleportation. If your sonic talent die is available, you can hurl your psychic blade to magically transport yourself to another location. As a bonus action, you manifest one of your psychic blades and throw it to an unoccupied space you can see up to a number of feet away equal to five times the highest number on your psionic talent die. You then teleport to that space. The blade vanishes and your psionic talent die decreases by one size. So this is fun and interesting. I mean, we're rolling a die eight, uh, so you can basically teleport up to up to 30 or 40 feet i should say or maybe five <laughs> depending on the the no you automatically te you automatically teleport to the maximum distance so if your if your talent die is a d8 you can teleport up to 40 feet away you just hurl your blade there you don't roll the die you just teleport up to what the maximum level so you pick a spot and bam i'm there oh i t okay i totally misread that and misinterpreted that that is very nice yeah the highest the highest number on your sonic talent die and you know once you do it then the die decreases even if you're at your minimum if it's available you've got at least a d4 so you still can teleport you know up to 20 feet away but by the time you're 12th level that's still you know what 60 feet away pretty nice yeah that's not bad at all and the homing strike is also really nice as a rogue you already do enough damage but when i'll tell you what sucks as a rogue because i have i have this happen all the time is missing <laughs> and sometimes it's not even missing by that much so just having the opportunity to possibly hit turn a miss into a hit is awesome and the fact that if it doesn't work you haven't lost anything it's yes. only if you succeed that the die then goes down so that's really nice so like you could literally you know, be like, all right, I charge up, I stab him, and then as a bonus action, you know, so like, you know, okay, I, I, I charge up and miss. You know, I use my, my homing strike, it still misses. All right, I still haven't expended anything. I'm going to toss my blade and I'm going to teleport, you know, away into a, into a safe area as a bonus action. There's so many options. You know, I, I love the Sonic Talent die and, and the, you know, the, the way it all flows is just pretty awesome. Yeah, as a ninth level character, you're already getting a, a bunch of cool stuff to do with it. So next up, we have the psionic veil at 13th level can weave a veil of psychic static to mask yourself as an action you can magically become invisible along with anything you are wearing or carrying for 10 minutes or until you dismiss this effect no action required this invisibility 
invisibility ends if you deal damage to a creature or if you force a creature to make a saving throw. Once you use this feature, you can't do so again until you finish a long rest, unless you decrease your psionic talent die by one size. The, you know, the normal wording is there, but basically you can keep using it. You get it once for free and then you can keep using it by reducing the die. So that's pretty sweet. 17th level, we get Rend Mine. You can sweep your psychic blades directly through a creature's mind. When you use your psychic blades to deal sneak attack damage to a creature, you can force that target to make a wisdom saving throw. Usual way for figuring out your DC. It's dex based. Unless the save succeeds, the target is stunned until the end of your next turn. Once you use this feature, you can't do so again until you finish a long rest, unless you decrease the Sonic Talent die by one size to use the feature again. So this is a port over from Soul Knight from the last version. Except for they changed something. I can't tell you word for word verbatim what they changed, but I know they changed it in a direction that I like and I feel heard. Because <laughs> the way it was before, it was like you do less damage than your sneak attack and there was like saving throws involved and stuff. And then it was like, what was the point? Why bother? Just give them their sneak attack. Everybody else gets it as a rogue. You know, there's no point. The way they did it here, perfect. Love it. I love the change. So next we move on to Sorcerer. This is the Psionic Soul, which... Uh, originally appeared as the aberrant soul one day a light blazed forth within you the illumination of psionic power your mind now sh simmers with this power the full extent of which you won't fully grasp for years to come you can touch the other minds with it and alter the world around you by using it to control the magical energy of the multiverse will the power shine from you as a hopeful beacon to others or will you be the source of terror to those who feel the stab of your mind and witness the strange manifestations of your might among the gith yankee and gith Sarai, the powers of the Sonic Soul Sorcerers are revered and marshaled on both sides of the Gith War. In Eberron, many Kalistar dream of discovering this origin's abilities within themselves, and in Athos, more sorcerers are born with Sonic Soul than any other source of power. In the glades of primeval woods, touched by the Feywild, children sometimes awaken to the wonders of psionic power, and in communities that survive far realm incursions, some folk are mutated into horrific aberrations, while a lucky few not only retain themselves, but also discover that psionic energy now suffuses their minds. As a psionic soul sorcerer, you decide how you acquire your powers. Were you born with them, or did they manifest throughout childhood? Or did an extraordinary event later in life leave you shining with psionic awareness? Consult the Sonic Origins table for a possible origin of your power. And they give you, you know, 10 different options. And of course, it's always one of those things of, you know, go ahead and, you know, pick, roll, or use it as inspiration to uh, decide your own. Yeah, there's some really cool stuff on there. Definitely recommend you take a look at it. Again, Sonic Talent, nothing new to talk about there. Uh, but now we look at the three powers that they're going to get. Psionic Discovery, you can unlock the ability to cast a mind oriented sorcerer spell you don't already know after meditating for 10 minutes which can be done during a rest roll your sonic talent die and choose a sorcerer spell of a level for which you have spell slots and that is in the school of divination or enchantment you know that chosen spell for a number of hours equal to the number you rolled i mean sorcerers getting extra spell casting potential is just amazing you know literally this is one of those things of like okay i can do this i can have fun and it's for hours hours that you get to add this to and the only limit is you know you rolling that die so if you have a long list of divination or enchantment spells that you might want to be able to use i'm gonna meditate a handful of times and i'm just gonna you know jot down all of these things and okay i've just picked up four spells that i next you know that i know for the next couple hours all right let's go you know at first and second level it's auto you're automatically going to be able to tap into the spells that you wanted absolutely well, you also get Psychic Sorcery. When you cast a spell, you can use your mind to form it rather than relying on words, gestures, and materials. To do so, roll your Psionic Talent Die. The spell then requires no verbal component. And if you roll the level of the spell or higher, the spell doesn't require somatic or material components either. Which basically, you know, if you get that, you're doing a free subtle spell. Pretty much. That would basically, you know, be what that is. And that's, you know, nice. Again, the, the only risk is every time you roll the die. Yeah. Uh, which, which this is, there's a lot of this going already on in the sorcerer already you have a lot of opportunities to roll that die which means you know you might get that max number and decrease your die and go through them but if you you know if you get lucky 
you keep doing cool things. We're also going to get a telepathic speech. You can form a telepathic connection between your mind and the mind of another as a bonus action. Choose one creature you can see and roll your psionic talent die for a number of hours equal to the number rolled. You and the chosen creature can speak telepathically with each other while the two of you are within a number of miles of each other equal to the number you rolled. To understand each other, you each must speak mentally in a language the other knows. The telepathic connection ends early if you use this ability to form a connection with a different creature. So this is actually very different than the Soul Knife's ability. This is one to one, but possibly a bigger range as well as a longer lasting. You got longer lasting and you've got bigger range, but you know, as you said, it's less and it's got the limitation of not being able to be used in a situation where the two people don't share a language. I would much rather them take the two abilities and say, all right, I'm going to make one ability and give it to both. I feel like they both have their uses, but having that limitation on the charisma based character of saying, hey, you have to automatically share a language to me that limits the role-playing potential on the charisma based person that's the one who should be able to do it to, to someone who doesn't share a language so i'm not happy after reading soul knives and then reading the sorcerer not not really happy with that one i will say by creating two separate abilities they're very similar they get to play test them both and see what the feedback is and you know maybe we don't get either of them we get something completely different that is entirely true it's great to be like okay well you know i can have a mental connection for the next five hours with somebody in town and i'm gonna go do this thing out with the adventuring party and as soon as x is done you know you can do this thing here in town all right that could be kind of cool and definitely can set up a handful of interesting role-playing scenarios or maybe some time-based challenges of like oh we need to do this here and then you need to do that here but i have no way of communicating well this offers that I don't it's know. also I, five I, miles ted five miles in five hours with that if that's what the role was so right. that sets up some interesting things too we'll see what they end up doing with it and then as with the other classes you get the same uh, same block of changing the die size and the psi replenishment and you know we don't need to go into that again no but we get to sixth level and we get psychic strike doesn't sound very sorcery but let's see what they do with it you have learned to channel additional psychic energy into your spells immediately after you deal damage to a creature with a sorcerer spell in which you expand a spell slot you can roll your sonic talent die and also deal psychic damage to the creature equal to the number rolled you can deal extra damage only once per turn so basically you know you get that extra die every turn it's not a ton more damage when you think about spells per se but it's there and as long as you don't roll max damage you can keep doing it every round it is a nice feature it's not going to work with cantrips because it doesn't expend a spell slot so you do have to factor that aspect in i think it is a great way of being able to having a resource uh, of you being able to expend it so that you hope that it can increase in size other than that yeah it's a it's a minor ability but you know who doesn't want a little bit extra damage on their you know fireballs true that so so Next up, next up, we've got Mind Over Body, 14th level power. You can now use the Psy that flows through you to give your body extraordinary abilities. As a bonus action, you can roll your Psionic Talent die and spend one or more sorcery points to magically transform yourself for a number of hours equal to the number rolled. Until the transformation ends, you gain one of the following benefits of your choice for each sorcery point you spent, choosing a different benefit for each point. So one option is you can see invisible creatures within 60 feet of you, provided it isn't behind total cover. Another option is you gain a flying speed equal to your walking speed and you can hover you gain a swimming speed equal to twice your walking speed and you can breathe underwater or lastly your body along with any equipment you are wearing or carrying becomes pliable you can move through any space as narrow as one inch without squeezing and you can spend five feet of movement to escape from non-magical restraints or being grappled so for you know you roll your die you can spend four points and get all of those abilities if you really wanted that extra adaptation pretty cool pretty useful to just be like i need to be different right now and poof i can for a point it's not a bad spend uh you risk rolling the die but again you know it's it's not bad at all and some of those things could be could be very clutch you know if you're falling and you need to you need to fly now or you know you need a swim speed for whatever reason or you're grappled by something very nasty now you can 
not be grappled. So I, yeah, I think it's a good ability and it's interesting. And I like the idea of them tapping into their mind to do these different things. So lastly, we're going to get Psychic Aura at 18th level. If your Psionic Talent die is available, you can unleash your Psionic Power in a crackling aura of Psychic Energy. As a bonus action, you can magically radiate this transparent 30-foot radius aura for one minute or until you're incapacitated or you lose your Psionic Talent die. Whenever a creature starts its turn in the aura or moves up to it for the first time on a turn, you can roll your Psionic Talent die and deal Psychic damage to the creature, equaling the number rolled plus your Chrism modifier. If the creature takes any damage, its speed is halved until the start of its next turn. So that's a really cool control effect. You get damage in there. Again, you're going to be rolling that die a lot. So there's always that chance that it's going to change. But it could also go up, not just down. So it's kind of thematic and cool. Basically, it's like the spirit guardians from hell. Absolutely. You know, the, I think the real clutch thing is, is, you know, when the creature is there, you can roll your psionic talent die. So to me, I look at this as you are physically manifesting and every time someone is getting close enough, you're making that choice as to whether or not you're going to unleash this, you know, psychic attack at them. Uh, it's not using your reaction, so it can it can be used on multiple opponents, but that, that specific can means that you can exclude your allies from it. Yes, uh, it's definitely a very cool thing that you can now do. Now we get into new spells, and we have a handful of them. Bard gets one fourth level spell, Intellect Fortress. Sorcerer gets a Cantrip, Mind Sliver. Second level Mind Thrust, fourth level Intellectual Fortress. Warlocks get the Cantrip, Mind Sliver, Wizard. So we got just a handful of spells, first of which is Intellectual Fortress. So this is a fourth level Abjuration spell, casting time as an action. Range is 30 feet. Uh, components are just verbal. It's concentration up to an hour. For the duration, you or one willing creature you can see within range has resistance to Psychic damage as well as advantage on intelligence wisdom and charisma saving throws and when you cast a spell using a spell slot of fifth or higher you can target one additional creature for every spell slot above fourth the creatures must be within 30 feet of each other when you target them so it definitely can be useful uh, depending on the situations you're in and obviously anytime you might be taking psychic damage it's great to have you'll be the you'll be the totem barbarian's best friend with fighting this mind one. flayers <coughs> Yes, yes. Any Anything that does psychic attacks and having advantages on those saving throws that might not be the best for the party, also really good. The fact you can cast it on yourself or on other members of the party, also great. And you can include more people with a high level spell slot. So that gives it some flexibility. So Mind Sliver, the cantrip, it's an action, range 60 feet, it's verbal, and duration is around. You drive a disorienting spike of psychic energy into the mind of one creature you can see within range. The target must make an intelligence saving throw. Unless the saving throw is successful, the target takes one die six psychic damage, and the first time it makes a saving throw before the end of your next turn, it must roll a d4 and subtract the number rolled from the save. This is a one of those things that... I see this as just like a, I just keep doing this and, you know, you're going to have that negative, uh, you know, every time. So if nobody else is causing them to make a saving throw, they're always, you know, coming at, uh, at your save at a minus D4. And just with every other cantrip, you know, it scales, you know, it's a D6, two die six at fifth, three die at 11th and four die at seventh. Yeah. So it's great for setting up party members or setting up your next attack. Uh, so not bad at all. Mind Thrust is a second level spell. Casting time is one action. Range 90 feet. Components verbal. Duration one round. You thrust the Lance of Psychic Disruption into the mind of one creature you can see within range. The target must make an intelligence saving throw. On a failed save, the target takes 3 die 6 psychic damage and it can't take a reaction until the end of your next turn. Moreover, on its turn, it must choose whether it gets a move an action or a bonus action it gets only one of the three on a successful save the target takes half damage as much damage and, and suffers none of the spells of eff uh, other effects super cool higher levels when you cast the spells a third level slot or higher you can affect an additional creature within 30 feet of the first so basically you you're going to do some damage and give them a a version of slow that lasts for a round so yeah, that's a pretty cool thing, I think. I would absolutely agree. There's a lot of uses for that limiting actions, you know, uh, eliminating the, the target's reaction, you know, if it fails at saving throw. It's incredibly useful, uh, you know, devastating 
if you uh, you know if you wind up using this on like a boss monster. Uh, next, we're gonna move into the feats category. Uh, we do get five new feats, four of which are actually half feats, so they're pretty potent in the things that they offer. So first up is metabolic control. Uh, you're gonna increase your strength dex or con by one to a maximum of 20. If your sonic talent die is available, you can take an action to channel your psychic power to nourish yourself for the next 24 hours as if you consume, consumed sufficient food and water for the day. When you take this action, your Sonic Talent die decreases by one size. This is like super, uh, you know, Dark Sun, Athis uh, kind of thing. So yeah, I think that, you know, definitely spurs to, uh, hey, we might be doing this. You know, they mentioned Athos several times throughout. So definitely seeing that, you know, those building blocks in, half, in action. If your Sonic Talent Eye is available, you can meditate for one minute, at the end of which you gain the benefits of finishing a short rest. And your Sonic Talent Eye decreases by one die size. And you can't meditate in this way again until you finish a long rest. So you basically can do a quick short rest, making that, uh, you know, you know that, that monk look silly for taking a full 10 minutes. This, you know, this is really nice, especially if you happen to be playing, I would say, a fighter. This works really well for them because so much of their stuff comes back on that short rest. Also worth uh, mentioning, there's a prereq. You have to have Sonic Talent feature or the Wild Talent feat in order to even take this. You need to have those options, so apologize for not saying that. No worries, and that's going to be the same for everything but the Wild Talent. Uh, so next up is telekinetic. Increase your intelligence, wisdom, or charisma by one. You learn the Mage Hand Cantrip. You can cast it without a verbal or somatic component, and you can make the Spectre Hand invisible. If you already know this spell, its range increases by 30 feet when you cast it. It's a spell casting ability. Is the ability increased by this feat? So whichever one you chose. I, when I read that ability, I really think about um, Ledger Main from the Arcane Trickster Rogue mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and how that would be really nice thing to stay with it right as a bonus action you can try to telekinetically shove one creature you can see within 30 feet of you when you do so roll a sonic talent die and the target must succeed on a strength saving throw dc 8 plus your proficiency bonus plus the ability modifier score that you increased by, uh, for this feat or be moved toward you or any away from you a number of feet equal to five times the number you rolled a creature can be uh can willingly fail the save so it gives you some utility uh, so it's kind of a cool ability to kind of get some control. So we also have telepathic. Again, you need the sonic talent or wild talent feat. You awaken the ability to mentally connect with others. You gain the following benefits. You're going to increase your intelligence, wisdom, or charisma score by one to a max of 20. You can speak telepathically to any creature you can see within 30 feet of you. Your telepathic utterances are in a language you know, and the creature understands you only if it knows that language. Your communication doesn't give the creature the ability to respond to you telepathically. You also have your sonic talent die is available. You can cast the detect thought spell requiring no components. When you cast a spell, your Sonic Talent die decreases by one size. Your spellcasting ability modifier. Your spellcasting ability for the spell is the ability increased by this feat. So it's another fun thing. I really enjoy all these. I love these uh, Sonic feats from 3rd edition, so we're getting a little bit of that back. And, you know, anyone can really do it if you have enough uh, feats to pour into that. We're all getting a little bit of a feat tree too, right? Yeah. Because you need two feet. You need one feet in order to get the second one if you're not, if you're if not, you're not Sonic already. already. Yep. So Tower of Iron Will. Your mind's defenses are formidable. After you or another creature you can see within 30 feet of you fails a saving throw, you can use your reaction to roll your psionic talent die and add that number to the saving throw, potentially causing you to succeed. So, you know, nice save your ass. I don't know if this one's worth a full feat, um, yeah. but it does offer an option. Yeah, I, I felt like, you know, this, this one was probably the the weakest of them you know it doesn't automatically cause you to you know your, your die to decrease in size so it's it's useful but i agree with you i think that you know this one probably should be a half feet as well moving into our last feet we have wild talent and this is the only one that doesn't require you to you know already have a talent die so this is the one you need if you're not going to take a sonic subclass you awaken to your sonic potential which enhances your mind or body increase one ability score of your choice by one to a maximum of 20 to represent this enhancement. You also harbor a wellspring of psionic power within yourself, an energy that ebbs and flows as you channel it in various ways. The power is represented by your psionic talent die, 
uh, and then you get the, the following options. Psi boosted ability. When you make an ability check with the ability increased by this feat, you can roll the psionic talent die and add the number rolled to the check. You can choose to do so before or after rolling the d20, but before you know whether the check has succeeded or failed. You can also do a psi guided strike once on each of your turns. When you hit with an attack roll that uses your ability increased by this feat, you can roll your psionic talent die after you make the damage roll and then replace one of the damage dice with the number rolled on the psionic talent die. And then it's got the same caveat of changing the die size as well as the cyber uh, replenishment. Which this is uh, this is really nice because I think this is a great first level human feat, to be honest with you. If you're playing with the optional rules, with you get feats, why not? You're already using an optional rule. So you get to pick and choose. Uh, you would be able to technically do these abilities while raging as a barbarian, which is kind of cool. Uh, and then also... The other thing is, I believe this kind of works off your character level when you're talking about your your die, your psychic psionic talent die. So whenever you finish a long rest, your die uh, reverts to its starting size. When you reach certain levels, the starting size of your psionic talent die increases. At 5th level, it becomes a D8. 11th, it becomes a D10. 17th, a D12. Uh, but it says if you have a psionic talent die from another source, such as a class feature, you don't get more than one die, use only the one with the largest starting size. So because this isn't coming from a class feature, uh, I would absolutely say it would have to go off of your character level, not your uh, you know class level. I would say this is like almost a must take if you plan on multi-classing, because then you can always use the biggest die, right? Uh, because the way everything, nothing, nothing stacks or adds together, you have one die, you'll just have more options. But by having being a wild talent, you'll always have the option of the biggest die available, which is good for several reasons. Because it's more swingy, you're less likely to get the one or the highest number, which means you're probably going to get more uses. So uh, just some, some food, food for thought. I don't know if that's uh, how it was intended or not, but it definitely increases your multi-classing power a bit. And even by itself, it's still pretty cool. All in all, this is a good on Earth Arcana. I like a lot of the way directions they're moving in when we're talking about playing a psionic character i'm you know curious to see what they do and i would love to see a full-on character class that is based off of using that psionic talent die so i i look at this and as i said you know like i was a little bit of like the downside of them saying you know the mystic is dead i think that that could be because you know perhaps they are looking at you know a psionicist character class with the the talk of athos and sorcerer kings the setting of dark sun to me that means they are at least talking about it considering it uh and that is where psionics is most prevalent and I am sorry, but if they try to release Dark Sun without a full-fledged, you know, psionic, you know, purely psionic character class, I think they're doing it, doing the setting a disservice because psionics is the largest aspect of that class because magic destroyed the world. Therefore, psionics is, is the only thing that's acceptable, uh, you know, through regular practice. So to me, it, it gives hope and encouragement uh, that we will see Athos for 5th edition. And it and it speaks to me that, okay, well, they might say the concepts that you saw in Mystic, that they're throwing away, and they're potentially building a character class entirely based off of this new psionic talent die, which to me means if you're going to do a class where the subclasses get these things, maybe the psionic talent die for the psionicist, maybe it starts at a D8 and goes at 17th up to a D20. Imagine the ridiculousness, you know, possibles there. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know if that'll ever happen, but I'm curious to see. Just throwing it out there just to, you know, see what kind of, you know, things people will talk about and say. I agree with you. I think this is a great selection of abilities. I'm most intrigued to play the, the Soul Knife out of any of these. I think it's definitely fun. And this is the first time that the Soul Knife has really actually spoken to me, so... Soul Knife and Psy Knight work for me quite fine. Not sold on the Sorcerer variant, but, you know, that's fine. Each to their own. If you like this on our Arcana, guess what? We have a whole playlist where we review and discuss them that you can check out up here. If you want new 5e content options for players and DMs alike, then why don't you hit up Nerdarchy on Patreon? Not only that, we do weekly Patreon-only hangouts. We also have monthly giveaways. Our patrons are automatically entered and more. So until next time... Stay nerdy. Stay nerdy.